Good morning, Dizzy. We have spoken is our Saturday show every Saturday morning, 9 15 our time, 10 15 Eastern time, other 15 other places, depending where you live. This is Reagan. I am Jeff. Dole Whip Dad's the channel. I'm glad you're here. Welcome in. Lots of people sitting in waiting for the show to start. That makes my day. Francisco in the house. What's going on, Francisco? Thanks for being here. Thanks for being a member of the channel. I can see that because he's in green and highlighted BDF. Keith, my friend, is in the house. BDF the BFD. Change the name up a little bit. I like it. Uh, my mom's here. Mars here. Reagan's here. I'm here. You're here. Listen, we've got a lot of Star Wars news. She is excited to review episode three, season one of The Mandalorian, which I kind of talked about last week on accident because we do one a week. Yes, and don't worry, this time I made sure that I watched episode three, so we did have a repeat of last week. We woke up early and we watched episode three, season one of The Mandalorian, which is the one we talked I talked about last week and, and you have been talking about all week at my house. The only thing I've heard from her all week is dad. Remember which show we're talking about this Saturday. Now it's Saturday. We've had a lot in our family that have happened since then. Yeah. But let's talk about Star Wars. Um there's Disney news and stuff, there's Star Wars news and stuff, and there's episode three. So let's start with the Star Wars news, shall we? Can we do that? Of course. So this is some big news. Are you? Ex have you heard about the Star Wars Hotel, my darling? Uh, yes. You're pretty excited about maybe staying there? Yeah, I would love to stay there. I'm a huge Star Wars fan. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, you know what? I could show you guys on the screen, but it might just be easier to show you on my phone. So good morning to Rob. Good morning to Nico the Greco. Good morning to Magic and Mouse TV. Good morning to Sherry. Awesome Sunset Travels. Again, those people who are in green are members of the channel. They bless us with that. Thank you so much for that. I'm just going to go straight to Instagram. Let's just pull it up. All right, because this is pretty cool. So if you're on Instagram, there's a lot of Disney parks leadership that you should really be following if you like the stuff that I like. Jeff Valley, I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. I believe I am. Jeff Valley doesn't post very often. 26 posts. Official account of Jeff Valley, president of Walt Disney World Resort. And it was worth a view yesterday. Check this out. That is Mr. Valley. Sorry, I got some notification popping up. Showing off what? Do you know what that is, Reagan? I can't see it. Are those sleeping quarters? Jeff Valley and Josh DeMauro, the head guy of all of the Disney parks. So Jeff Valley is the president of Disney World. Um, Josh DeMauro is president of all Disney parks. And I, so Josh DeMauro and I enjoyed a sneak peek into the great progress that the Walt Disney World Imagineering teams are making on Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser here at Walt Disney World. So that is one of the sleeping quarters you would have. That's a bunk bed situation. If you look closely, you can see. Don't be claustrophobic, right? There's two spots to sleep there. Here the same two people are with a different view of the same thing, right? It reminds me of like when we're at the poly and they've got like the, the main beds. They got two beds and they got the pullout bed that is like kind of hidden under into the furniture. I don't know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I do. It's in under a table. Yeah. It was one of the best days ever because Payne and I didn't have to share a bed. You guys, well, yeah, right. You guys loved it though. Yeah. And then there's some artwork, which is super cool. And then here's some actual beds. So if you don't want to be, you know, if you're claustrophobic, you can actually sleep in, you know, the open air too. I am so, well, the you don't, I mean, if, you, if you're the adult, you kind of get to pick. I mean, I think the kids probably go in the bunk bed. So it's a four person deal, I think. I think they only have, four, I don't know. I don't want to give any wrong information, but this is going to be exciting. This is going to be, Two days, um, you, you go into Star Wars and you live the Star Wars world. I'll shut up. What do you think? Are you excited? That is so ridiculously cool. I don't know how hot, like I'm a goals guy and I don't have this on the list currently, but when it opens, it's going to have to go to the top of the list pretty fast. Like it's supposed to be not cheap, I'm sure, but I, I'm really, really, really excited about what you guys think in chat. Let me know. Um, are you guys going? Do you want to save up the money for it? Do you think, oh, man, it's going to be too expensive? Oh, my gosh, I'm not sleeping in those bunk beds. Let me know what you think. Let me follow along in chat. We'll talk about a little more Star Wars news in the headlines, and then we'll get to her review of The Mandalorian Episode 3, the Season sin. 1. The Sin. That's right. That's a rough one. Um, everybody's saying hi. Everybody's saying I'm doing good. Good, good, good. Uh, I think I said hi to Rob Fuzz. What's going on, buddy? Sherry says hi, Jeff and Reagan, using the emojis. Thank you so much. Uh, WandaVision's first two episodes were strange. Yeah, I'm going to probably do a video on that later. I mean, we can talk about it now if you want, but afterwards. But, woo, super weird, super weird. Um, 
WandaVision is the second most expensive television show in the history of history. So far, they haven't spent but eight bucks on it. I don't understand. So it must be getting good pretty soon. Surf for girl, surf for girl in the house. Yeah, adults in bunk beds, Mara. I, don't, I think those are for the kiddos. I think the main beds were that last picture I showed. Yeah. Would you want to sleep in that bunk bed or would you feel like claustrophobic? Honestly, I could probably handle it. I think you're going to love it. Yeah, I will. When I was a kid, I would have loved it. Yeah, I used to be claustrophobic when I was younger, but I got you used to what? I used to be claustrophobic. I couldn't oh. stand being closed in, but I'm not anymore. I didn't know that. Okay. Um, so, and then we have other news. So last week, do you remember last week what we talked about on the show where I mentioned that Robert Downey Jr. was rumored to be potentially Grand Admiral Thrawn in a new live action movie coming up? Yeah. And, and many of you didn't like it. Well, he's the hero, and I don't like seeing a hero play a villain. Lars, oh, hold on, let me get rid of this. There we go. Lars Michelson? Who? All the notifications. This guy, rumored to play Grand Admiral Thrawn in Ahsoka Disney Plus series. Lucasfilm and Disney are reportedly not wasting any time developing their upcoming Ahsoka series. So you were really kind of bummed when season two of the Mandalorian ended because there wasn't a season three on tap. Like we had to wait a while, but yeah, we have all, we have to wait until next year. But, but you got Ahsoka coming. Yeah. She is pretty cool. I mean, if you'd never got another Mandalorian, but you got a two season of Ahsoka, would you be happy? Probably not. Cause I really like that show. <laughs> Ahsoka is going to be pretty cool though. Uh, Lars Michelson. Again, I hope I'm pronouncing his name, right? This guy. It's reported to be playing Grand Admiral Thrawn in the upcoming Ahsoka Disney Plus series. The fan favorite character was name dropped in season two of The Mandalorian by Rosario Dawson's Ahsoka Tano. The Rebels character has been rumored to join the live action Star Wars franchise for years now. There were even rumors that Thrawn was going to show up in the 2019 Rise of the Skywalker. Though that obviously did not end up happening in the end. However, it seems like Dave Filoni is ready to reintroduce the villain in Ahsoka. So Dave Filoni, who I've said before, he is the creator of all of the um, the animated series, Rebels and Clones and all of that. And he is slowly but surely making our life more awesome. Hey, Orange Clone Vlog in the house. What's going on, my man? By introducing the characters and storylines that he created for the animated series into live action. And I, I for one, am loving it. You, for one, are loving it. Yes? Yes. Dave Filoni is my favorite. So, Grand Admiral Thrawn, is that the blue guy? Yes, do that you, is the blue do, guy. Do you think the non-blue guy looks enough like the blue guy for you? I need a closer look. Yeah, they have a really good, yeah, they have, their face should be close enough. Works for me. According to sources... I wear a lot of makeup and a lot of computer animation, though. Right. Lucasfilm has tapped the actor, according to sources, Lucasfilm has tapped actor, this guy, Lars Michelson, to portray Thrawn and Ahsoka... Um, the guy and the studio have reportedly come to an agreement, though that has not been officially confirmed. John Favreau recently revealed that Dave Filoni is hard at work on the spinoff series. However, that is about to that is about as much official intel that anyone has at this point. Michelson provided the voice for Thrawn in Rebels. So this guy is the voice that you know as Thrawn already. Much like there you go, Cosmic 8. Ashley Eckstein is the voice, exactly, of Osaka, Ahsoka, but Rosario Dawson is now the face of it. So so would you rather have the same voice or an actor that is a, a, a better, considered a better actor or actress in these characters? Because I don't care. Um, personally, I would have a better actor playing them so they could sell the character better, but See, Ashley I Eckstein. not have anything. Ashley Eckstein is kind of a little did star really a Star Wars Disney legend now, right? Because of her voice portrayal of Ahsoka. But that doesn't mean her acting ability, her it's a very physical role too, right? Rosario. I mean, that's Gamora, right? Is that Gamora? Anyway. Super, super I don't know. I didn't know the animated series like you did. And I know that Ahsoka was somebody that you and Peyton were really excited to see. Yes? Yes. And I thought Rosario Dawson did a great job, did you? Yeah. So as, as a big fan of Ahsoka, were you happy with who they picked and how great of a job she did? Yeah. So I think it'll be interesting. I mean, this guy obviously is a pretty well-known actor, better better known outside of the Disney Star Wars world than Ashley Eckstein is. Disney Star Wars trivia, Ashley Eckstein married to David Eckstein, Major League Baseball player, former Major League Baseball player. That is cool. Pretty cool. 
Everybody say, hey, howdy, hey, to OCV Orange Cone Vlog, my friend, he's here. Boo, don't cancel the Rebel sequel series in favor of an Ahsoka series. Um, I agree with Reagan. I wouldn't trade Mando for Ahsoka, says Mar. <clears throat> Mar and you are very much in the I love Mando, give me more Mando camp. Yeah. Yeah. I think the ugly little truth is it was a planned to series 16 episode show all along. And if it was hit a big hit, they would have options, right? And that's it was a big hit, so they had options. I mean, it's like the movie Lost. They should have ended after season two, right? Yeah. If all the big creators go off into other things and they give it to somebody we never heard of, it'll end up being Walking Dead series season eight. Not so good. I haven't seen Walking Dead series eight. You don't watch Walking Dead any series. No, I don't because I'm terrified of zombies. I mean, they only just, you know, eat you. What's the big deal? They right. used to terrify me a lot of Season one, episode three, she very much wants to go over it. one episode, of, uh, uh, an episode of our show. So it is time to get to season one, episode three of The Mandalorian. Name the sin. Right there. You should be worried, right? So what do you think the sin was? Well, I could tell that a man's Mando made a big mistake. Yes. His sin was? To leave Grogu behind. Baby Yoda, what, you going to eat him? You're going to put him on the wall? I don't even know. That was a rough line, right, from Happy yeah, Birthday to Carl Weathers, by the way, but who gave that line, right? Yeah. So he drops him off. You, you get a little tinge of, hmm, something big must be coming up when the, the Stormtrooper, by the way, did they look so cool in this episode? They had, like, a darker feel to them. Anyway, they're walking in, right, and the, the Stormtrooper guy grabs, I don't know, the little floating Baby Yoda Floating thing? Or Star Wars bassinet. I don't know what we're talking about. Star Wars crib. Star Wars crib. And he grabs it, right? And he kind of shakes it. And the guy says, hey, be easy. He said, you take it easy or whatever. And I thought, oh. He just ticked off Mando. Mm -hmm. And then so, then they're they're making the trade, right? It gets all his little, you know, chocolate Nestle bars of Beskar, right? And they make the deal. Yeah. And then he says, what are you going to do with it? And he says... How uncharacteristic of person, you know, whatever he says, right? Yes, yeah, so that was a perfect imitation. Kind of scary, creepy guy. I don't think I liked that you think I sounded exactly like him. Um, no, and, I didn't. And by the way, he's got the cool, what is it called? Flaming rabbits or flying birdies or we go, do it. Takes out all the people because he got the new best car and she gave him flaming rabbits. With flame birds. That's what I said. And it was no, awesome. You said flaming rabbits. That would be scarier. Yes, that would be terrifying. Whistling birds is awesome, right? You just hit a little button and it takes out all your people. I've needed this so many times in my work life. But if I could have flaming rabbits, that would scare the crap out of everybody. <laughs> little bunnies running around on fire, everybody would be terrifying. <laughs> What's your favorite scene in this in this season one, episode three? Because for me, the flaming rabbits thing was Whistling awesome. Birds. That's what I said. But I also love when he tells the droid to go and he won't go and then he goes. Then he pulls and then, out his blaster and says, Strive! Right? Strive! <laughs> and then all the Mandalorian's buddies, who aren't really his buddies, but they're this is the way kind of people, all kind of cruise down. Like, there's so many great scenes in this in this one. Yeah. What's your favorite? I'll shut up. Uh, I'm gonna hey, go Dean. This is how I shut up. Hey, Dean. Dean, the turkey lakes are in the house. What's going on, my man? I'm going to go into detail on my favorite scenes. So, my favorite scenes are when he gets back to the covert and a, the what the covert you know the area where the uh, the mandalorian house yes that's what i said the covert so, go ahead my my favorite scene is when he goes to the armor forger and she's and he explains that he needs new armor and then the other mandalorians all walked in curious because so what they walked in curious walked in there curious, were others so, yeah uh -huh. And one Mandalorian saw that some of the Beskar had, had the Imperial insignia on it, and he tried to remove Mando's helmet. Mando reacted by taking, by grabbing onto his fist. Drinking coffee, lunatic! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> by grabbing onto his fist, and then, and the fight broke out, but then the leader said, stop it! <laughs> so, whistling birds, flaming rabbits, spilling the coffee. It's like a show! <laughs> With Kelly from Mickey, the Mickey Bunch, and almost a big fight we just had. Cosmic Eight Starlight Cafe says good morning. Um, also says she's the heart and soul of the character. I like Rosario as a live action actor. I do too. 
for the character, but I would prefer her main story to be told in the form it was originally intended. So does that mean you don't like Ahsoka being in the Mandalorian? I don't, I don't, I don't think I get it. She's the heart and soul of the character. We're talking about Ashley Eckstein. Oh, it went away. Let me read it again. Um, I like Rosario as a live action character or actor. I do too for the character, but I would prefer her main story to be told in the form it was originally intended. Oh, so you'd rather have an Ahsoka animated series. Is that what you're saying, Cosmic? I think that, oh, I mean, that's cool too, right? That'd be cool. We've got some Star Wars animated stuff on the way, so that'll be fun. Oh, CD, I've heard, oh, I left my heart in San Francisco, but not, I left my brain in Seattle. Good morning, Tommy from Corner Sports is in the house. What's going on, man? Flaming Rabbits, see? Orange Cone Vlog says it is Flaming Rabbits. Can you promise not to knock out my coffee when I'm drinking it? Yes. All right. So, another scene I like is... Here for a moment in the house. Welcome in. Is when he... Is when the armor forger is getting... Will Hitchhiking Moons in the house. Welcome in. Is when the armor forger is giving... Is forging his new armor and equipment. And during the hammers... Hammers banging, it's causing flashbacks. He's seeing memories of the Separatist mm, droids yes. attacking him. Yes, yes, yes. That confirmed my suspicion that he was attacked by Separatists when he was a kid. Meaning Clone Wars timeline. He was a kid during Clone Wars. Mars says I was staying sure. Almost. I protected my my coffee. <laughs> Magic of the mouse, that's Bill. He says only 11 months and 9 days until the new episodes of The Mandalorian. But who's counting? You and my buddy Bill are on the same page. I'm um, here for a moment. Slap in. Nope. Her being in The Mandalorian was awesome, says Cosmic 8. And I can't think of a better talented actress for the role, but yes, I think an Ahsoka series would be animated. Ah, uh, should be animated. I gotcha. So yeah, you would rather Ahsoka be... Okay, well, that's cool. That's cool. I can see that. Um, I follow Ashley Eckstein on um, Instagram, and she's certainly very, very likable. And I don't know that she's a, a live-action actress, but she may be. Maybe I just don't know. I don't, I don't really know. I don't know. Um, so you want to keep going on Season 1, Episode 3, The Sin? Uh, yeah. I had a feeling. And my faith, and then my, one of my very favorite scenes out of them all was when Mando went back to get the kid after he realized he made a grave mistake. Grave. And he went back to get the kid, and he that was when we really got to get a good look at just what he is. Like we knew from the very beginning that he's a fighter, but we never got a good look at his fighting abilities until now, until the fight scene in this episode. That's when we really get to see the kind of fighter he is. We saw that he's a warrior stud and he's not to be messed with. Anyone who messes with him, it's going to have a very angry, very mad man, very powerful Mandalorian on their tail. I have a question. May I ask a question? Sure. So when the Mandalorian fights with the other Mandalorian, when the Mandalorian's mad because the, the Mandalorian, the Mandalorian has some best car, but it's got Darth Vader's autograph on it or whatever. When they have that fight, is that the dumbest scene in the history of the world? Because they're both wearing Beskar and they're like, psh, psh, psh. don't they know that they're just punching some metal and that's pretty stupid? Well, Mandalorians, only a Mandalorian can kill another Mandalorian. So technically, if the, there are certain weak points in the armor, like areas where the armor, it, where are little cracks in the armor in between, like say the shoulder pad and the chest plates. There are those kind of spots where they could aim for. Why do you know that? Are you a Mandalorian sniper? Are you a are you a No, I figured it, I noticed it when I watched the Clone Wars and Mandalorian. I noticed that there are little spots of fabric in between the armor. Oh, CV says I would like to see what they do to incorporate Mando and Grogu into Galaxy's Edge. It can go one of two ways, good or bad. Hope they do it right. I haven't seen her do live action acting, says Cosmic Hates, in a while, but I know Xtane used to have a live acting role. Oh, did she? See, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. The fight scenes in the scene were intense. They were. They were. Very so, intense. I have a few things I want to go with. Did, <laughs> so, I don't, I'm not on Reddit a lot, but I get articles about some Reddit stuff now and then. There's been some fan theories out there. Now, fan theories are a deep, dark hole of craziness in general, especially when they're Star Wars-y stuff that we love. Do you want to hear about the Star Wars? I don't know. So a fan theory is just a fan theory. But one of the things that the deep dark hole of fan theories on Reddit and other places is going into is who saved Grogu. When we meet Grogu, he's 50 years old. Yes? Yes. Little baby at 50. I'm 51, so I love this idea. But that's a whole other conversation. So he's 50. Order 66. Do you know what Order 66 is? Yes, it's the order the Emperor gave out to wipe out all the Jedi. 
So at some point they say, execute order 66. And all of the bad guys take out all the good guys being the Jedi's true. And that includes everybody at the Jedi Temple, where Grogu apparently was raised. Who saved him? That I do not know. It wasn't Ahsoka because if it was, don't you think they would have recognized each other? If it couldn't be Ahsoka, because she's all, I don't know who this guy is. I've only ever seen one other one. You think Ahsoka lied? No. Yoda's girlfriend saved him, says here, for a moment. <laughs> That's funny. Any other ideas? I haven't thought much about this. Lies! You've thought about it a lot. I haven't thought about this particular area. The whole who saved Grogu. From, I haven't thought about that. From inverse.com, what a great picture, right? That's like, as a grandpa of grandkids, I would love that face. All right. <laughs> Mandalorian Season 3 Theory reveals Grogu's prequel era savior. Could this Jedi have been Grogu's mysterious rescue? So I'm going to read a little bit about this. And as a full-on, in-depth lover of this, I want you to tell me, oh my gosh, that's a great idea, or this is stupid. And I want you guys in chat to tell me if you think so, too. Ready, set? Ready, set? Who rescued Baby Yoda from Order 66? That question has been nagging at Star Wars fans ever since the Mandalorian introduced the character. Grogu was already 50 years old by the time viewers met him. Which meant he was alive during Order 66 in the Jedi Purge. Yes? Yes. The fact that later confirmed by Ahsoka Tano, or Tano, she yells at me, so I'm not sure which one, in The Mandalorian Season 2, who also revealed that Grogu had been raised on the Jedi Temple in? Coruscant. Coruscant, exactly. These details have led fans to speculate about Grogu's past even more than they were before. Fortunately, a new fan theory could reveal the Jedi responsible for taking Grogu from the Jedi Temple. Temple. Do you know who that is? Yes, I do, but I don't know his name. The theory. Some guy suggests that it was none other than Quinlan Boss. Quinlan Boss? Quinlan Boss is the name, but I, I can't remember anything about him from the Clone Wars. Suggests that it was none other than Quinlan Boss who saved Grogu from the certain death on Coruscant. To back up their claim, this dude argues that due to his extensive experience working undercover, Boss would have been uniquely equipped to sneak into the Jedi Temple and get Grogu out of there, as well as keep him alive and hidden afterward. Grogu was also being guarded by Nick Toss, not Nico the Greco, but Nick Toss. I don't know who that is. When he was found by Din Djarin, which is the Mando. In the Mandalorian pilot, many of whom typically work for the Hut clan, Jabba the Hutt, the other Hut, fat guys. Which would connect back to Boss's connections to the criminal underworld. Who is Quinlan Boss, a Jedi during the last days of the Republic? Quinlan Boss was known for being more of a brash rule breaker. Just like Reagan. She breaks all the rules all the time. I do not. She doesn't. She just she she gets mad at me for breaking the rules. Because rules are rules for a reason. For other people. He was an expert tracker capable of reading other people's memories. That's creepy. By yeah. touching objects, objects they handle. Wow. And was often assigned missions that took him into the galaxy's criminal underworld. In the Clone Wars animated series, Boss teamed up with Obi-Wan Kenobi on a mission to recapture Zero the Hut. I don't know who that is. Uh, he's a Hut who caused a lot of problems. I bet he Wars. did. Huts are bad. And capture the bounty hunter Cade Bane who fled, blah, 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 blah. Meanwhile, the Star Wars novel Dark Disciple, which takes place later in the war, follows Boss as he is assigned to the Jedi Council to assassinate Count Dooku. To do so, Boss teamed up with Ashton Ventress, which is fun to say, so I'm going to say it again. Ashton Ventress, Doku's former apprentice who helped Boss. Doku's former apprentice. Go undercover. Dooku. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. There's a lot more stuff, but I don't know what half of it means. What do you think? Does that? Oh, my gosh. That's a great idea. No, that's stupid. What are your thoughts? I'm going to have to trust you because I don't know what they're talking about. Um, I have heard rumors that that did happen, the whole... At the whole boss and Ventress teaming up to assassinate Dooku. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, I don't really know if that's a good or bad theory. I don't have enough information. Let's catch up in Jack, shall we? Yeah. I think that R2-D2 was involved in Grogu's escape. I mean, I love me some R2-D2. That'd be cool. We did seem to like each other. I mean, they're both cute and small. Then, I don't know. Ahsoka was busy when all that went down. Her, the last season of Clone Wars. Grogu being 50 years old, he's probably be 350 old to equal in the age of... Uh, 
Okay? Knowing the storyline, Jakas, I don't know the... Oh, see? I don't know what you're talking about. OCB, who clearly knows clone stuff like you do, says, knowing the storyline, Jagasta knew... I don't know what that means. From both Star Wars, The Clone Wars, and Star Wars Episode Two: Attack of the I don't. Who is Jacosco Nu? Do you know that name? It doesn't sound familiar. Me either. I don't know. Served as the librarian in the Jedi Council at Coruscant, and had means, motive, and opportunity to save Grogu from certain death. Logically, she makes the most sense to have been. Logically, you know way more about it than me. Is she the real skinny thing with the big tall head? So that pops Wait, in my head. Madame Jacosta. Tell me more. She's a Jedi Master, I think, and she's also the keeper of the Jedi Archives, the holocrons, their records, their information, even their criminal database. Would you mean yeah, if I told you I don't really know what a holocron is? Seriously, after all the Star Wars we've seen, you do not know what a holocron That's is? That's a yes, she would be mad at me. There is a theory that the other lady who looked like Yoda, same species, saved him because he was on the council. Here for a moment, you know more about it than me. Uh, does the timeline add up for Yaddle to be Mother Grogu? The only thing I know about Yaddle is it's a game with a bunch of dice that you get to roll, and I had a lot of fun with it. I had good, good stuff. Have you ever played Yaddle? Nope. You put the dice in the thing and you roll them. You try to get Yaddle. You roll it for all the same. You get to yell Yaddle. Nope, never heard of it. Yes, who was providing the funding, the protection of the bounty when Mando was tracking it with the fog? Carolyn Life in the house. Happy birthday to you. Want to sing with me? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Caroline. Happy birthday to you. Oh, I got to send you that video, don't I? I didn't do that A holocron is an ancient Sith or Jedi USB drive. Yeah, that is pretty much what it is. Why are you so mad at me about it? Because we learned about holocrons and Rise of Skywalker. You know I don't pay attention. You need to about being. I that. don't care. I don't listen to details. Do you realize that listening to details is very important in Star Wars universe? You do always tie in details that I'm always <sighs> pointing out to you because you you're do, not paying attention. You do realize that the last time you wore those ears, you poked me in the head. Yes, and I might just do it on purpose this time. That's Yahtzee, says Dean. It's also Betty White's birthday. She's 99. Everybody loves her, but she's crazy. Um, yes, happy birthday, Carolyn. I hope you're having a great birthday. You want to sing again? No, I'm good. Okay. Jocasta was an old woman. So I love this show. I love that every Saturday morning we do this show. I love we talk about it all week, don't we? I mean, not all every day, but we talk about it throughout the week. We're excited about it. Oh, yeah. we can talk about this and we can talk about that. Let's make sure we watch the episode so we can review the episode. I got to be honest with you. About half the time, I don't have a clue what you guys are talking about. And it makes it more fun for me. I like it. I like Yahtzee. I like Jakku. I like I like holocrons. I think holocrons, aren't those things, those things that you put, they got garlic on them and you put them on your, your salad and they crunch it. No, no, no. No, those are coruscants. Those are coruscants. Coruscant is a planet, not a cooking dish or whatever. Oh, no, the little things where it's like a little piece of bread, but it's like 40 days old and but it tastes, I know it doesn't sound good, but it tastes good. Those are coruscants, aren't they? I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, are coruscants those things that you slice and you put a little Nutella in there and you have it in the morning? The you croissant. mean croissants. Eileen Ishkra, who I know very well, and she's pretty awesome, says Jacosta is an old Scottish name. Interesting they used it. Okay. All right. Dean says coruscants go on a salad. Yeah. So are you excited about Grand Animal Thrawn? Do you want to know who it's going to be? Are you excited about Ahsoka the show? Do you just want more Mandalorian? Tell me where you're at this week. Are you excited about the Star Cruiser? Do you want to go there? What's the deal? I really want to see it go to the Star Cruiser. I really want there to be more Mandalorian, but I am looking forward to Ahsoka's show. Crouton, Mouton, Zoot. They're all talking about croutons in that. So uh, if you could stay on any hotel at Disney, would it be the Star Cruiser when it's open? Probably, because I'm really excited for that me one. Me too. Me too. I just hope that they put it in the DVC somehow. Because then I could go. They could probably start their own DVC. It could be what? What would it be? Disney Vacation Club, it would be Star Wars Galactic Space Cruiser Club. Which would be less... That would be more letters, and I don't remember all the letters I used. So, But we would have to get more points, is what I'm saying. Yeah, probably. Am I boring you? 
Not really. Carolyn, Jeff is messing around. I, Mar, I am Mar. This is serious stuff. I never, I never, I never kid about stuff, do I? You do that literally every day. Does it annoy you? Sometimes. Depends on what it's about. Does it annoy you when it's things that you care about a lot that I make up stuff? Yeah, that does irritate me. Has that stopped me yet? Nope. <laughs> no, really irritates me is when you slurp your coffee. You tried to not get into my onto my onto my me. I didn't mean to not get into I you. I don't think it matters if you mean to. If the coffee's on my me, it's still on my me, whether you meant to or not. All right, don't croissants come with chocolate? I mean, yeah, if you go through Starbucks. Um, Jocos too new is the librarian in episode two when Obi Wan was looking for her information. Yeah, so is that is she the tall skinny chick with the like I don't know like long and round and tall and bluish? If you sound like Norm Crosby, I don't know who Norm Crosby is. Mar, I Mar, I have a question. Who's Norm Crosby? Do you know who Norm Crosby is? No. I don't either. Star Wars. So, what's the biggest news? Is it the Mars guy who might be thrown? Is it the Star Wars Galactic Space Cruisers got you know you got to sleep in a little hole thing? Is it what, what's the biggest news of the week for Star Wars in your opinion? What are you most excited about this week that we've talked about on the show? Um, probably the new bunks on the uh, bed. I'm looking forward to seeing, seeing pictures of the Star Wars Hotel and seeing what it looks like inside. Me too. All right, so there's more stuff going on outside of Star Wars that I'm not going to talk about too much on the show, but I do want to let you know I'm going to probably do some videos, um, and I'll just let you know about it. So, yes, the Galactic Cruiser thing, I might do a video on that. Yes, maybe this Lars guy might do a video on that. Disney Plus has got WandaVision. The first two episodes were out yesterday. Pretty strange. Pretty strange. So I'm going to say it again. I said it at the beginning. Some people have come and gone. New group in here. The most expensive TV show in the history of history is WandaVision. $25 million an episode, I think it was. Um, the highest before has been the Pacific, HBO's spectacular show, by the way, which averaged about $20 million. And I've watched the first two episodes, and I could have produced those suckers for about $8.95, I'm pretty sure. So I don't quite understand what's going on there. I suspect some awesomeness is coming soon. I don't know. Um, did you hear about there's a secret room in Disneyland and that a famous actor pointed it out? I may do a video on that today. Um, I love the Haunted Mansion. I would love to be in a secret room. Uh, this actor did his homework as a kid in there. So I might share that with you a little bit later. Um, what else? What else? There was something else I want to talk to you guys about. Oh, geez. And the annual passes. Have you heard that Disneyland canceled annual passes? Yeah. We used to be Disneyland annual pass holders. And that would have made, made us sad. But now I live in Texas, so I don't care as much. But wouldn't that have been a bummer? Yeah. People are freaking the heck out. Norm Crosby was a comedian who act consisted of substituting words in the wrong place. Really? Who would do that? That's crazy. I would never do that. You ever put peanut butter on your croissant? Croissant? And no, I Good. don't like You do, it. too. You, you gave me one the other day. You brought me, you brought me one with, you brought me one with peanut butter. And you brought me one with Nutella. It was very sweet. I brought one for you to eat, and I don't eat peanut butter on my croissants. Croissants? Oh, you're doing that? You're putting the word? I understand what you're doing. I've never heard of Norm Crosby, but I'll have to look him up. All right, I think we're coming to an end. What else do you want the people to know? Did you tell them about season one, episode three enough? Anything else you want to say to the people about the sin or Star Wars in general, or you just want to get something off your chest? No, we covered pretty much everything. <laughs> You don't have to go, but you can't stay here. Thanks so much for being here. Have fun storming the castle unless you really want to storm the castle. And then don't do that. That's just crazy. That's because, people, you know, I understand. That. We have spoken. Or, you know, storm the temple. <laughs> Ooh, that's good. We have spoken as our show every Saturday morning, 915 our time, 1015 Eastern time, other 15s, other places, depending on where you live. I'm glad you're here. This is me and my daughter's weekly show about Star Wars, Mandalorian heavy, but Star Wars, Star Wars, Star Wars. What do you want to talk about next week, darling? Episode four. Season one, episode four of The Mandalorian and any Disney news and stuff. Star Warsy, Star Warsy, Disney news and stuff. I think we've done enough damage today. What do you think? I think we've done enough. We have, have spoken. spoken. Boring conversation anyway. You know, Han Solo says that when he he shoots. There's a, they're in the, it's the whole 
garbage shoot scene, right? Where he's yeah. talking and he shoots the thing because they're like boring conversation. Anyway, I think it's a good name for the show too, but we call it We Have Spoken. All right, that's all. You don't have to go, but you can't stay here. I put Storm of the Castle unless you really want to give the castle the a storm and then stay the heck home. All right. Storm love you. <laughs> um, let's see. What else we got? No live streams today, tomorrow night. Um, creator Talk probably with Lynn. Um, probably a bunch of videos on a couple channels. By the way, are you on Clubhouse yet? Clubhouse. I'm at Jeff Bates on Clubhouse. If you don't know what Clubhouse is, you will soon. A lot of social medias come and go. I highly believe this one's going to stay. Check out Clubhouse. I, If you're already over there, I'm at Jeff Bates. We're doing some stuff. I haven't created any content for it yet. I'm just having fun learning it. But you definitely want to get an invite if you can. Anything else you want to say before we say goodbye? I feel like we're leaving quick. I don't mean to leave quick, but I feel like we're, we're all out of our stuff. No, that's pretty much everything. We, we have uh, spoken. Broken. Love you all. The best day ever. Storm to Temple. Bye for now. See you. Want to hit me in the eye with your thing now?